Hello, noble students and families. Mr. Koblenz here with Math Lesson 10.5. This is uh, the actually the last lesson we're going to do in Chapter 10. And the reason for that is uh, the remaining chapters are all about measurement. And I pretty much assume that not everybody is going to have the tools at home that they need to use to do measurement. So um, this is going to be end of the, the, the last math lesson. Um, there is going to be still one more math assignment from the math book. Uh, but it's just going to be the two quiz pages that come after Lesson 10.5. It's not going to be for a quiz grade. It's just going to be for a classwork grade. But I'm going to expect you to do those two pages. Um, and that's going to be all the math that we have for this week is Lesson 10.4, Lesson 10.5, and the two quiz pages. Okay. Um, so again, this is the end of our math lessons um, that we're going to do. Um, from here on out, we're probably going to be doing some review. Um, maybe a few... Things that are new, but they're not going to be anything from any of the math books. They're going to be all um, not using those those math books at home, essentially. So um, let's get right into the lesson because this one will take me a little bit of time to go through. Um, this is our last lesson on time. It is using time intervals and problem solving. So this one's going to be even more tricky than lesson 10.4. So again, I highly, highly suggest you have a parent help you with these problems. Okay. Obviously, you can watch the video and go over the answers with me for the first couple pages, but um, I am only going to give you two problems to do today from the homework page, um, so do your very best and, and get help if you need to. Okay? So, problem solving, time intervals. How can you use the strategy, draw a diagram to solve problems about time? So here's what we know. Zach and his family are going to New York City. Their plane leaves at 9.15 a.m. They need to arrive at the airport 60 minutes before their flight. It takes them 15 minutes to get to the airport, and they need 30 minutes to get ready to leave. At what time should Zach's family start getting ready? So, what do we need to find? Well, we need to find what time Zach's family should start getting Ready. That's what we are trying to find. That's what the question asks right here. At what time should Zach's family start getting ready? What information do we need to use? Well, we have a lot of pieces of information here. We know that the time the plane leaves, we know the time the plane leaves, uh, we know the time the family needs to arrive at the airport. And we know the time it takes to get ready. Sorry, that's incorrect. Let me fix that. You can fix it too. Uh, we know the time it takes to get to the airport. And we know the time the family needs to get ready. Sorry, guys. My handwriting is not great with a mouse here. Um, how will we use the information? Well, we will use a number line like we did in the last lesson to find the answer. So we know that they're leaving at 9.15. So why is 9.15 at the end? Well, let me explain why. Because we're trying to figure out all of the time they need before they get on the airplane. So all of this stuff is happening before 9.15. So 9.15 is the last thing that's going to happen. That's why it's at the end. Okay. Um, we need to count back blank minutes to find the time they need to arrive at the airport. So, well, we need to count back 60 minutes, because remember, that was the first thing. So, 60 minutes. Now, I'm going to shorten this a little bit, because we could count by 10s. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. But, I know that 60 minutes is one hour. So, one hour before 9.15... To be a jump of 60 one hour before 9 15 is going to be 8 15. okay now remember that we need to count back 15 minutes to find the time they need to leave for the airport why 15 because that's how long it takes them to get to the airport 
So going back 15, I notice I have 815. If I go back 15, what time is it going to be? Well, taking away 15 from 15, it's going to give me 0. So it's going to be 8 o'clock. And my last jump. we got to count back 30 minutes to find the time they need to start getting ready because it takes the family 30 minutes to get ready. So going back 30. Now, this is where it's good to have a clock to help you. Because I know that if it's 8 o'clock, my 12 is here, and my 8's somewhere over here, and my hour hand is here, and my big hand is here, right? And we need to go back 30 minutes. I know that 30 minutes backwards, 30 minutes is halfway around the clock from wherever you're at. Okay, so if it's here, it's going to be the opposite. It's going to be at the 6. If my minute hand was over here, then it would be the opposite. It would be at the 8. Okay, if it was over here, let me go over here. Kind of just diagonal from wherever you're at. Okay, cross from wherever you're at. So my minute hand is going to go all the way down to the 6. That means my hour hand is also going to move back a little bit. Because obviously it's not going to be 8.30. Okay. But going 30 minutes backward is going to be 7.30. And that is the time they need to leave for the airport. They should start getting ready at 7.30 a.m. All right, let's go on to problem two. Bradley, he gets out of school at 2.45. It takes him 10 minutes to walk home, and he spends 10 minutes eating a snack. He spends 8 minutes putting on his soccer uniform, and it takes 20 minutes for Bradley's father to drive him to soccer practice. At what time does Bradley arrive at soccer practice? Well, uh, I'm not going to write this in here, but let's go over these, these, these few things here. What do we need to find? We need to find what time Bradley arrives at soccer practice. What information do we need to use? Well, we need to use the information that Bradley gets out of school at 2.45. It takes him 10 minutes to walk home. He spends 10 minutes eating a snack. He spends 8 minutes putting on his soccer uniform. And it takes 20 minutes for Bradley's father to drive him to soccer practice. A lot of things happening there. How will we use the information? Well, we will use a number line. And we will draw a diagram to help us explain the answer. So, here we have to think. Does 2.45 go at the beginning or the end? Well, we know he gets out of school at 2.45. Then he walks home. Then he eats a snack. Then he gets his uniform, and then his dad drives into practice. So all of those things are happening after who gets out of 245. So 245 is going to be the start point. All right, the first thing is that he spends 10 minutes eating a snack. I'm sorry, 10 minutes to walk home. So 10 minutes home, 245, plus 10 more, 45, 55. 255. Then he spends 10 minutes eating a snack. Now, this is where it's tricky again, guys. If I add 55 plus 10, I'm going to get 65. But 65 is not on a clock. This is where we have to switch our hour. I'm going to draw a clock over here. Right? So right now it's 255. Right? So here's the 11. Here's the 12. The 1. The 2. This is a poorly drawn clock, but it'll help you a little bit here. Seven, eight, nine, ten. So right now it's two fifty-five. So my hour hand's like here, and my minute hand is here for fifty-five. So if I go ten more, ten, or sorry, five, ten. Now my minute hand will be on the one, and my hour hand will go past the three. So remember, my hour is going to change. It's now going to be three, and if my minute hand is on the one. Then that would be 5. 305. Now, he spends 8 minutes putting on a soccer uniform. This is fun. But it's pretty simple. 5 plus 8. 5 plus 8 is 13. Got it. 313. And then 20 minutes to get to soccer practice. So 13 plus 20. Three and three. Three thirty three. There's our answer. 
How do we know the answer is reasonable? Well, we know it's reasonable because we knew he got out of school at a certain time, 2.45, and we know he did a couple of things that talk about 10 minutes each, about four things, right? 10 minutes each. Um, and obviously it's going to be after 3 o'clock because it's more than 15. 15 will get us to 60. So it's reasonable, right? If we got an answer of like, 950 obviously we think well is it reasonable did all these things take a long time no they took a short amount of time but long enough that it would get us to pass three o'clock okay on to the next page let's do problem one and then we will most likely go ahead and give you the assignment to do all right <clears throat> problem one patty went to the shopping mall at 11 30 a.m she shopped for 25 minutes and she spent 40 minutes eating lunch. Then she met a friend at a movie. At what time did Patty meet her friend? Well, first we begin at 11.30 on the number line. We begin at 11.30 because 11.30 was the first thing that she did. She went to the shopping mall. Then we're going to count forward 25 and 40. Because those are the other two activities. So going forward 25. 30 plus... 25. I think this is the easiest way to do it, guys. I could count by tens. It's just it's going to take so long. So add. Add your add your minutes. Okay? The hours are only going to change if this number gets above 60. Remember that. 60 or above. So 30 plus 25 is going to be 5 and 5. So it's not above 60 yet. So 25 minutes it's going to get me to 11.55. Now we're going to go our last 40 minutes. So again, add. Add 40. Now you're going to notice. 5, 9. Okay? 95 is above 60. There's a problem. Okay? So we know our hour is going to change because we're above 60. It's going to change to 12. And here's another little trick. Since it's above 60... If I want to figure out what the minutes are going to be here, I'm just going to subtract 60. 5, 3, 12.35. There's our answer. That's a little trick for you right there. So when you, time's elapsing, okay, then we, uh, time is elapsing. Sorry, I, I lost my train of thought here. But if you're adding those minutes together and it gets above 60, then subtract 60. And make sure you change your hour from 1 hour, 11, to 12. Remember when you get to 12 and you're going to the next hour, it's going to be 1, not 13. No 13th hour. Okay? If you're going backwards, let's say you're going backwards. Let's say it's, uh, it's 10, 10. And you got to go 20 minutes backwards, right? So if you would try to subtract 20, that doesn't work, does it? 10 minus 20, it's not going to work 20 minutes backwards. Remember, that's where you got to switch hours. Okay? So pretend, here's a little something. Pretend this is, add 60 to the 10. So 60 plus 10. Now we've got 970, right? I'm going to change this hour to 9 one less. Now, this is a little confusing. This is, this is probably not going to understand this. That's okay. You can use this method. It's better. Okay. But I could add 60 to this. Now I can subtract 20. It's like regrouping, right? I take this 10. I make it a 9. I add 60 minutes to 10. I got 70 now. Now I can subtract. I got 950. 20 minutes before 1010 10 is 950. Hey, just little tricks. Little tricks to help you out. All right, um, so problems to do. Two and three. Two and three on page 589. That's it. So we got Katie practiced the flute for 45 minutes. She eats the snacks for 15 minutes. She watched television for 30 minutes until 6 p.m. What time did Katie start? So draw yourself a number line here. Draw as big as you need on your paper. Okay, and notice, is this going to be a start time or an end time? Well, she did 45 minutes, and she did 50 minutes, and she did 30 minutes until it was 6 p.m. So that was the last, 6 p.m. was the last thing. 6 p.m. should be at the end. 
and you're going to go backwards 30, 15, 45. Uh, Nick got out of school at 2.25. He has a 15-minute ride home on the bus. Next, he goes on a 30-minute bike ride. Then he spends 55 minutes doing homework. What time did Nick finish his homework? So getting out of school was the first thing he did. You're going to go forward 15, 30, and 55. Definitely get a parent to help you with these guys. You probably will need it. But also let me know if you need help. I would be happy to assist you and explain to you how to do these problems. But thank you so much. Um, I hope these videos have been enjoyable. Um, I'm going to make a very, very short video for the last um, work pages you're going to do in the math book. Just to quickly go over them and how you're going to solve them. Uh, but that's going to be the last math video um, over these math lessons. So it's been a fun, fun time making these for you guys. I hope you've enjoyed them, um, but Mr. Koblenz, out.